Okay, so let me start a new notebook. Let me share my screen. Okay, I downloaded the file now. I don't know where I put it. Okay, here it is. So this is the script, which pretty much comes from what I put up in the Brainery Bytes. And they've added a, so there's still O2. So this just design, defines a strain history, right? Just a loading pattern. So if we, we can even plot it, strain history. Okay. So if I run this, there's the strain history that is, so that just defines all these little strains. Okay. And then, so we're, he's going to, we're going to use these strains to put him into open seas. And so this is the EY, FY, and the R for steel O2 and elastic, no tension. Yeah. Well, you put something with a zero tangent, he's going to have issues. Then they're defining a third material which is in series that combines two and one. Then they also have a material four that does the same thing. I think it was just to not, I don't know why they just did two of them. And so now they're doing, and this is the material tester. So my concern is that the material tester isn't the perfect thing anyways. Um, and so they're subjecting in the material tester, which is a little thing that Frank developed, you apply these strains, so you set a strain, and then it gets the stress. Um, and so then they're plotting it. My take on this is that, and so if we run it, uh, what are we plotting? Stress, strain versus stress, and why are they, or why are we getting two lines in one? Oh, let's take this out. Values are too high. I don't know. So, yeah, no, because I was also plotting the strain from before. So it was just mixing two things in one plot. So what they're saying is that if they run this again and again, they get different results. And for me, it kind of makes sense because it's not doing any sort of iteration. It just kind of sends it to the function and it gets back. What does the function give me? So let's see. This to me makes sense, right? They're loading it and then it fails. I don't know what this is, so why don't we do we'll plot well the strain we've already seen what it looks like. So if we plot the stress, they do like it's like an initial value and then it stays negative because it should be that way, right? It because you have no tension. So we shouldn't be getting this little initial response. So I'm going to put this here. And I think you need to do PLT show and then PLT. So that makes it two different figures. So if we run it again, now they've got a strange response. It could just be a memory leak. If we run it again. You get this. <laughs> That's pretty. But I think it's because you're using this. So look at this. If we instead of using the ENT, so one is let's take out any junk. OK. And Oh, look at that. Yeah. So the way I would do, I guess the material tester has a memory leak somewhere in it. Because um, if we do this, if we do restart and run all, which totally clears the, the memory, right? we get this, which makes sense. Then if we do it again, like this, ah, yeah, it's un, I, I think it's this zero tangent. It doesn't know where to go when you've got two things in series. Cause right now we've got two, if I draw, 
this is the problem with putting things in series, right? You got one spring and then another spring and you are imposing a displacement on here, right? That's what they're doing. The system is kind of iterating between these two in finding what is the sum of the, so, you know, delta two and delta one. So delta one plus delta two is equal to delta, right? But they also have the same forces, F1 equals to F2, which is equal to F. That's how things are in series. And so they kind of, you kind of got to iterate. If you have two materials that are not elastic, the system needs to iterate on this. And so I think it's just trying to figure out, wait, which side am I, am I going into? So what we could try is a couple of things. One is to not do this, but what if we put a thousand steps? Let's put 10,000 steps, right? So now at least it's tiny little things. So now if we do, we get this, we do this, it's still, yeah, it just can't work in parallel when you've got a zero. Because if we do this, what if we do, instead of this ENT, uh, let's do material two. Actually, let's just put elastic, right? And then FY over EY. One to the one. Oh, okay, which is what they have here. What's the input? Is this E or a strain? I guess that's the stiffness that you put in there. Okay, so if we do this, then we won't have problems. You get always the same solution. Whoa! Fascinating. Look at that. So the way I would do it is we do it differently is if we do a so so this is the material tester and there's a bug in the material tester period there's nothing we can do so the way i had done it in the past before this material tester is that you can define trusses one truss but the thing is This is how you would test the two materials. You put them in two trusses and you give, you know, this stiffness one material and this, you know, this is material one and material two. Okay. Now, always important when you do trusses is that you also put in an elastic one in parallel so that you don't get out of control displacements when one of them yields when you've got the plateau. Um, it goes crazy. But this person, I think, is just trying to come up with a series material. I remember there was a question that this is the person that wants to use a material with no tension, right? They're trying to do steel O2 with no tension or no, yeah. And I don't think you can, and there isn't a material, and so they're trying to put this thing in parallel. So whether we test in a different way, it doesn't matter. Now, the thing is, I think that material will work because it won't be in an indeterminate system like this. If you put it into a real structure, there's reloads, and there isn't a, yeah. Um, so I the way I, huh? Plastic PP also work, right? Can you test elastic PP? Yeah, that's a good idea. That's what I was thinking too. Yeah. So what do I need to give it? A uh, value. A strain, maybe like 0.1. Um, is that the input? So it's tag, it's e EY, and then it would be FY over EY, right? 
think so. Let me check. Yeah. Nope. Oh, elastic EPP. Is, um, yeah, the E is redundant. Yeah, I was thinking. That's correct. So, okay. So now what you could do, uh, same problem, which is weird. And so this, and what you're saying, yeah, an elastic PP doesn't solve their problem because it's symmetric. I think somebody had done a material, wasn't it? I, I think there is a steel O2 that is not symmetric. What's this variable? Oh yeah, no, this is my manual. So if we go to Let's go to Open Seas Materials. There is a steel that they did that was, I think it was Christian who submitted it. Steel O2, here it is, extended by Filippo. And maybe it's this one. What's special about this one? Extended, blah, 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 which is well known. Yeah, you see yield in tension and in compression. Okay. So if we do this here, so we take these out. Whoa. So funny. Different editors have a different thing for. Okay, so now what we want to do is one define this. So we do steel MPF. Material tag is going to be four because it's one material. So that's FY, and then we're going to put 0 0.01 times FY, or vice versa, I think, actually, right? They want no tension. And then E, Y, R, and all those other things. OK, so let's try this. The number of variables is different. Yeah. There's more so factors in. What's the, oh, the one, the beta negative. OK. And so we need to do R. And also, I wonder if this needs to be a negative value, but hopefully not. OK. So this is good. See how this goes to a higher value, right? So if we do point oh oh one, and then we make this almost be 0 0.01 times that, It's the same the value. The R, the factors should be applied in both ways. There was two R's here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, because we want the negative side to be the regular R, right? right? Okay. And then the positive side is zero. But and you get this weird behavior. You kind of have to because that's how it is with no tension. You kind of get this. So I don't know if this is what this person is looking for. Um, but this would work. My concern is this. What is this initial? And I think this is a problem. Again, it's a material. I think it's a material tester issue. But we've got like this initial. Oh, let's do this. If we go in the negative direction first, actually, that's what it's doing is the first cycle is positive. Right. And so we get zero and then we go to the negative side. So if we flip our. Scale factor, we do minus that. Right. So now we load in the negative first. 
I'm going to, this is, is this what I edited? This was when I copied it. So scale factor, I have a negative value. So if I do, So we're going negative first. And so why is this? I think it's just, yeah, these first steps are like, oh, no. We're doing a strain. Did I, am I doing a strain? Yeah, well, that's just a loading thing. So I think this is, maybe is what they want, right? It's a steel or two without. Now, here's the interesting thing, though, right? This behavior is different from. If we go back to the previous one, right? Where we had steel O2 in parallel. Let's go back to the original that they had this. No tension. And this, right? So let's run this same way. One of the times we get bad, but when we got it good. Remember we had it that it actually looked good one time? Maybe we start the camera. Yeah, that's a good idea. So we're going to do restart the kernel. We're going to move this cell up. So we'll do this first, right? What do we get? OK, see, so it's different because this is it never sees anything in here versus this other material actually goes in this direction, right? So it's a different behavior um, because this one here always reloads, unloads. So this one here unloads in this tangent here. The other one unloads at this strain. So it, again, it depends on where you're trying to do. And so what if we do this? Another option would be to do if you do hysteretic material, right? So let's do hysteretic. I know this is really junky thing. Okay. If we do the hysteretic where you define strain and this, so this in hysteretic, you do stress strain, stress strain, stress strain right? Positive and then negative. So if we do 0.01 and then a really large number almost, right? And then we still do 0.01 comma 2. You have to definitely define at least two points in the positive. Then in the negative is going to be minus this, minus that. And then we'll do something like minus... 1.3 times f y oh no this is negative f y divided by that right cuz e is a is a stiffness it's not a strain right i think so so then we've got minus 1.3 f y and then we'll do this minus you know 10 times 1 and this 10 would actually be, you know, you take that R, the ratio, and just kind of, you know, work through it. So, but let's say we've got this. Then we need to define the pinching parameters, I think, 1 and 1, and then 0. This is why with mine I took them out. <laughs> so... 
stress, strain, stress, strain, one, one, zero, zero. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Zero, zero. Okay, so now we've done hysteretic material. What do the curves? So that's what this gives you, yet a different response. It's interesting because it's all about the reloading. So I think this is more like one point, you know, oh, one gives you a more reasonable looking. And so this now reloads to zero. So if we have, let's take this screenshot versus steel in parallel. This is the voce du voce. Where's my other? case this so the one on the left is haha -ha, interesting okay so the one on the left is steel o2 in parallel with a no tension and so it reloads back along that path right it doesn't it it doesn't hit it doesn't go to this point you know it doesn't hit zero it actually goes here and so it does this kind of stress versus what looks different but so if we do this hold on a second so if we do instead of 1 we do i think it's 0 0.99 and then we do 0 0.01 This now gives you what you wanted, right? So let me make this a little bit more obvious. So this is now reloading in parallel, just the way that this steel reloaded. You see that, right? So what, let me see if I can scribble on this. So it's interesting because so much, the putting things in series and parallel is great until you need to load and reload, then things get interesting. So here, so we go up, well, I should change color. Um, so undo that and go to red. Okay, so this one goes up this way, right? Down, unloads this way, right? The first cycle. Then it goes over here. Then it comes back all the way to this point, And then it reloads here, goes over, goes down, goes over, comes back. And now, oh, reloads to this point and does this, then reloads along the same branch, right? And so if that's the behavior you're looking for, that's what you're getting it. And hysteretic can do that by controlling where this point is, right? So right now I've set it to 0.9 and 0.1 just so that we can actually see it. So this is loading and then it's gonna unload, goes here comes back and now reloads along this little line, goes down, goes up, reloads along this little line. And so it does that. And so I'm gonna, I had the point nine and point one, but if we push this point all the way to here, right, by using one, pretty much point nine nine, I don't know if we can even go to one, right? Then it reloads in the unloading branch. So if I go here, and I do back the 0 0.99. <laughs> Look, we can almost uh, overlap the two plots. Um, you see how it's like reloading on the same branch. So you can get with hysteretic, you can get the behavior of the ENT by just setting those tension values really low. Or you can get, and so it's kind of cool because this is why hysteretic's the best material. Um, or you could do the opposite. You can make it be here. Let me clear this up. 
Uh, or you can just set these to be one and one. So we could do comma one, comma one. So now we get, uh, interesting though, it still goes back to zero while this Botrid, this other material actually reload does these loops. Maybe your test data show you this and then you use this material. Uh, but you see, this material doesn't have tension stress, but it has tensile strain, right? Uh, but and so this doesn't this doesn't model fractured or well fractured wouldn't have it's like a gap. I wonder if the gap element material could do it. Um, but you see that this still has tension strain. It just doesn't have tension force. And so maybe this is not what you want. Um, here, I think the way you would control. Oh, oh, look. So you know how we went to big X and small Y? Actually, you could do the opposite. So I think if we do small X and large Y, I think that's what gives you. No, it, it still doesn't do the zero point. It gives you more rounded. It reloads along. So it's kind of cool because now you're reloading along the same envelope, though. It doesn't go to that. So it's kind of cool how you can kind of control the reloading path and how important it is as much as the envelopes are the same, but how do you reload? It's... Um, and and that's the thing. It's like taking the time to understand what these materials do. Um, it's kind of important, especially if you use them to model your hinge or your joint or or something else. So this was cool. Yeah. So yeah, putting things in series is dangerous because he can't control it numerically. But I'm glad we went through this exercise. Um, to kind of see cool. the, the different materials and stuff. I had done a study on this. If you look at the manual, if you look at the old, so if you Google it, um, let's see, material, I think that first Googling was that it takes you to the study that I'd done uh, of comparing the materials. Great, what was it? Oh. Ah. Yeah, I see it was this the baseline steel material. So I did like a comparison manual where it shows you the different behaviors and what you want to do and stuff. So um yeah, this was the old days and before they went to the wiki. So sometimes you'll find stuff that I'd done for open seas before. Even the old manual is better than the wiki. So if you go to open seas manual, um, this one here, go to this. If you really want to do stuff with open seas, this is the original manual that I wrote. And then we had to move over to a wiki. And so this is, I get into a lot more description and stuff. It's not just, this is the command. Um, you see, I put a lot more descriptions and things like that, which now you'll see in a lot of, I put these into the examples manual and stuff, but I put a bit more discussion in this original manual. So, um, that's where I recommend if you want to look at stuff. So. Interesting. Thank yep. you. Mm -hmm. So this is cool stuff. 